Hello, you join me on a particularly chilly uh, Chicago morning. And we are here to pay our respects to uh, South Pacific Distillery in Fiji. Um, in what sense? Okay, so um, South Pacific has never really been the most prominent and loved of the rum distillers out there. They're certainly nowhere near, you know, um, uh, the Jamaicans or uh, Foursquare for that matter. But among the nerds, uh, this stuff has really gained quite a lot of respect over the years. Um, so there's only really been, there's been a couple of ways you could get Fijian rum, um, South Pacific stuff. You could buy their own official bottlings, which are actually really hard to get a hold of, um, especially in the U.S. Uh, but there has been quite a lot of good independent bottlings out there, mostly sourced from uh, Maine, uh, which is basically sheer in, um, in Europe, um, but a lot also just sourced from the distillery uh, themselves. Uh, and these have really shown... Uh, th these are the things that have built uh, South Pacific's reputation. They have shown off the fascinating combination. Uh, Fiji seems like it walks a kind of knife edge. Like, on the one hand, it's got all these um, industrial characteristics, which are more in line with, um, oh, I don't know, like, uh, Caroni comes to mind. Uh, but then it, can, it just takes oak so well, it behaves almost more like, well, Foursquare for that matter. But then there's these tropical fruit notes, which are which are which can be kind of all its own. It's a very, very interesting distillate. And it's those independent bottlings that have really built its reputation among the hardcore rum nerds, um, even if everyone else is, you know, chasing the other folks. Um, and then there's, then there's Plantation. Then there's uh, Maison Ferrand, um, which has been by far the most commercially successful <laughs> releases of, of Fiji's stuff. Um, now, in... Uh, well, okay, I in the past, I have uh, let loose on my ethical problems with Ferrand and Plantation. Uh, I'm not going to go into that today. It's I don't have enough time. I have to go to work in a little bit. But... Um, Suffice it to say, if you were on the side of kind of honest business dealings in your spirits, and if you were on the side of, like, integrity for what's in the bottle, um, Plantation and Ferran is kind of among the bad guys. Uh, but, you know, you, you could say who cares, except also, like, and this is coming from the perspective of a reviewer, like, I have to judge stuff objectively. If, if the devil himself put a bottle in front of me and it was good, I would have to give that an, a... A reasonable score. Um, uh, the problem is, like you would, you would, you might expect that their stuff is, in return for those uh, issues, pretty darn good, and it just kind of isn't. A lot of what they put out is is sugared up and given questionable finishes, um, and even what isn't, the, the I've I've never had a Ferrand's plantation product that didn't leave me a little bit disappointed. Um, it just the best I can say of, of the, what I've what I've had is that it's kind of met my expectations for what I should be getting at that price point. But that's about it. I've never I the the they're, they they definitely are good at marketing. They're good at making their stuff look exciting because that's where they're coming from, right? Um, but that doesn't mean that follows through in what's in the bottle. And so anyways, so you could say, okay, well, you, you can, you have, you're still able to get uh, Fiji from those other bottlers, right? Right? Well, that is the reason why we are doing this little lineup here and this little... Um, a do video because a couple of years ago, uh, South Pacific signed an exclusivity gr agreement with uh, Plantation and Ferrand. They're still going to sell their own stuff. It's just you're going to have trouble getting it, as as usual, and uh, uh, they're not going to be, you know, sending any of their stocks to to any place where other bottlers will even get a hold of it. Now, uh, for the past couple of years, that hasn't necessarily been a problem because Maine, in particular, has just had tons and tons of stocks 
that they can sell to other people and uh, other 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 um, kind of middlemen as well. Uh, but those are going to start to dry up and and get older. And as they get older, they're going to get more expensive and more exclusive. So um, to uh, to South Pacific, then let's try some of those independent bottlings that really built this stuff's reputation. I have got a black adder. I have got a Valentine mallet and I've got um, a Holmescape. All right, so let's go through these in order. I will uh, uh, do an initial run through. We'll add some water. I'll go through again. All right, starting off with the Black Adder Raw Cask Fijian Rum. This is an eight-year-old um, distilled in 2009 at 62.4% alcohol. This is still on the shelves in Chicago, actually. And uh, there's a reason for that. How much do you think an eight-year-old cask strength rum from a somewhat obscure distillery should cost? 80 bucks? 100 bucks? They're trying to sell this for $150. And even if it's good, like, like who is going to look at this and, and, and say, yeah, I don't really feel like, you know, four square touchstone. I'm going to go with, with um, the Black Otter bottling of, of Fiji that's been sitting here. Anyways, um, let us see what we got. I love this color. This is a very, very light color. I imagine this is continentally aged. I don't know, though. They don't say. Oh, okay. And the, the distillate is just singing. Oh, man. All right, so um, where to start with this? So lots of, like, Bicycle tires, but like bicycle tires that have been like submerged, halfway submerged in vanilla ice cream. That's kind of what I'm getting on this. Oh, that's a good nose. Um, lots of other little things going on. There's some pineapple. There's some little touches of mango happening. Definitely some black pepper. Uh... Oolong tea, not nice oolong tea. This is this is the cheap stuff, but but it works in this context. A little bit of old coffee grinds, olives, certainly some some olives, a little um, little brininess, a little fennel. It's a fascinating nose because it, it's it's. You know, some ways I mean, I'm being pushed, you know, towards Jamaica or towards Coroni or something, but there's other things that are just completely unique to this distillate. Oh, you know, there's some like almost papaya coming through. Lime, lime peel. Really impressive nose. I was making fun of a uh, flack adder here. They may have actually picked a good cask with this. It, let's see what happens on the palate. Oh. I hate to say it. I. 150 bucks is nothing to laugh at, but. <laughs> you know, if you could cut it down a little bit, I would be right there. Like this is really, really good. Um, extremely peppery, extremely like there's again fresh bicycle tire tube, but there's also like some some burned rubber in there, some like you know burn like tire fire notes happening. Lots of the pepper is is extreme. Oh, it's so good. Um, Eight years, man. It's interesting. It isn't. It doesn't strike me as a particularly high ester sort of rum. Like it's. Uh, it's definitely pot still. I. I. I think they say it's. But it's pot still. But you can just tell by the character of this. This is a pot still rum. But it doesn't feel like it's a high ester monster or anything. It doesn't feel like it's been through the cousins process. This is just. 
it's it's the character of, of the distillate in this distillery. Oh, it's so good. Um, tires, olives, salted licorice. It's very austere on the palate. Um, seaside rocks. A little vanilla creeping through, a little vanilla creme brulee happening. Um, the coffee grinds thing again, more, more fresh coffee grinds on the palate, like Sumatra grinds where, you know, like you're, you threw some Sumatra in to your grinder because you just had some extra lying around and then you kind of regret it because you're like, is this going to screw up my grinder? That, that's kind of what I'm tasting. Um, This is righteous. Okay, now that I'm, I'm, uh, it's getting a little bit of air, or maybe my palate's getting used to it. There's, there's a little bit of that fruitiness cre creeping in. There's a little bit of lemon lime, and the mango thing kind of creeping in, but it's still just so dominated by the industrial notes, the pepper. Um, wow, uh, oolong tea again. This is this is a good this is a good bottle. Um, still not sure if it's worth 150 bones, but uh, you're not actually that far off. Three, four, five. I guess you'll need five and a half. But we'll see. Like a five and a half. Ooh, okay. I think it's starting to fruity up. I picked this as, as like the lead in to the other two, but this might steal it. We'll, we'll see. All right, so this is uh, the 2008, 2009 distillate, I'm sorry. Valentine Mallet. This is, um, I don't, I'm gonna put up what I can find on this. So the uh, so it's a single cask from Valentine Mallet of uh, Fiji South Pacific Distillery. Now, uh, and it's 13 years old. Now, um, the person who gave me this sample wrote the proof as 120.6. I could not find that bottle online. So what I could find a lot of is a bottle at 58.5. So I don't know if this is a typo or just a different bottle I couldn't find. Whatever, who cares? Um, I'll put what I have down below. Anyways, single cask. This is 13 years old. Um, this would have been this would have been like a 2004 2005 distillate so around the same time as this Holmes K we got coming up let's see what we got here <sighs> completely different yeah this is what makes Fiji fun like it's you don't know whether you're gonna get a burning tire or like you know a, a pineapple upside down cake um, and here, in this glass, I am getting the pineapple upside down cake. Oh yeah, it's like a big old dessert cart. Uh, lots of um, like Lipton's sweet tea. Vanilla. Oh, it's, it's, it's actually very, very decadent. Maple syrup. But there is, there's still quite a lot of pepper in, going on there, the black, black, the black pepper thing, and just a hair bit of that, that rubbery character. It's just, it's so, there's so much more cask involvement going on in here. It's, it's uh, like the bourbon cask is really pushing forward here. Maraschino cherry. Okay, some more fruit coming out. Uh, the pineapple from before is here. Wait, I already mentioned pineapple upside down cake, didn't I? So this, that's redundant, sorry. Little orange peel. It's, yeah, I mean, if, if you're a Foursquare fan, you will like this nose. You will find a lot of things in common, including full Virginia flake. Full Virginia flake, a very, very delicious flake tobacco. Um, and an important flavor note if you like um, Foursquare. 
Okay, salted licorice coming in on the nose now. A little black olive, not too much on the olives, but it's it's there if you look for it. Good nose, completely different nose from <laughs> from the previous class, completely different. On the palate. Ooh. Not what I what I was expecting based on the nose. This is extremely peppery. Wow. This is a pepper bomb. And okay, so now we're we're sort of halfway in between what the nose on this was suggesting and what the previous glass was doing on the palate. It's just lots of there's lots of pepper. Lots of pepper, but um Still some kind of decadent brown sugar, maple syrup, um, vanilla sorts of notes. Yeah, this is that that South Pacific dance. Oh, it's it's so savory. The the the, the burning tires are in play. The olives are in play. The fennel and salted licorice are right there, but it's still got like dried cherries, um, tons of vanilla, vanilla ice cream, the, the pineapple upside down cake, the full Virginia flake, um, the sweet tea, all that's still kind of there. It's just they're, they're playing off against each other. It's a lot of fun. I'm not, that being said, I'm not sure if I actually like this better than the first class. Let me check something. Um, no, I don't know. Sorry. Um, interesting. The only thing, the only place, the place where this is actually letting me down in comparison is 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 the mouth length. So a lot of stuff is is happening. It's ha a lot of stuff is happening, but it's all kind of happening at the front of my mouth. Right at my molars, it sort of dies off a little bit. Um, which is a hair bit disappointing, but not the worst thing in the world. Good run, though. And even though it gets a little weird on the palate, I could definitely see a lot of Foursquare fans getting into this. Which is, which is cool. Two... Three, four, five. I'm sorry, the black adder is really charming me. Um, I'm tempted to give the uh, ba the balance of mallet one more squirt of water, but I won't. I'm gonna hold off. All right, moving on to the Holmske Fiji 2004, bottled at 58% uh, alcohol, which they're calling Vera proof. Now, some of you out there with um, elephant memories are gonna say, "Wait a minute, Scott, you've already reviewed this one." No, I haven't, because I reviewed the 16-year-old Holmes K 2004 Fiji. This is the 17-year-old. Uh, you may be saying, how did they end up at the same proof? Because Holmes K is a little bit tricky with their with the things they label full proof. Um, it's a little bit annoying, but not the worst thing in the world. Anyways, this is a different bottling. This is a vatting of, I think, four casks. Um, so let's get into this. I, I really like the previous one let's, uh, that they did. Let's see what happens on the, on, the, on the nose of this one. Um, give me a second. So um, 
a little bit more reticent than the previous two glasses. This is not exploding out in, um, in my face in the same way. And kind of more bourbony as well. There's a little bit of a Jack Daniels kind of character to this, that, that smoky, you know, cherry thing that Jack Daniels does. You know what I'm talking about? Never mind. Lots of wood, um, dessert cherry, dried cherry, vanilla, touches of sawdust. This is mostly tropically aged, actually, but uh, uh, I think um, five years continental aging, something like that. Twelve and five. There's a little bit of a cola note coming through. I'm trying to nail down what kind of cola. You know, it smells like like uh, artisanal cola, actually, like the the ones where the the cola. Uh, nut note is really up front. That's really what I'm getting. Quite some, quite a bit of pepper, little black olive. But I gotta say, I'm more restrained on the nose than the previous two. Um, let's see what happens on the palate. By the palate, this has uh, quite a lot of oomph. The pepper is still very, very intense, but it's it's leaning much more in a safer, more four square direction. So, um, is the the tire the the tire on fire thing still there? A little bit. The olives, the fennel, the, the salted licorice, a little bit. But you kind of have to go looking for them. Most of what's happening is that sort of smoky cherry. Jack Daniels-y, uh, vanilla-y, kind of bourbony note. Full Virginia Flake, once again. Pineapple, definitely. A little lemon peel happening. I don't know, it's nice. It's nice. But I'm not sure I like it better than the previous glasses. <clears throat> so yeah, if you can imagine like a spectrum, right? I mean, it's actually very nice the way I've laid these out this way. Uh, because, you know, with this glass, the first glass, you really get full-blown industrial South Pacific. And in this last glass, you really get full-blown, like, South Pacific doing its best Foursquare impression. And it's in the middle where you're kind of getting something in between. Um, they're all good, though. It's good. I don't think I like it as much as the previous two. And I don't even know if I like it as much as the previous 2004 Holmes Gay that I had. Three... Four, five. Let's leave it at that. We'll go through one more time. All right, back to what is, to my shock, kind of in the lead right now for me. Uh, the Black Adder eight year old. Interesting. Uh, what is that? Um, there is a little bit of, of citrus soda coming through. No? So a little bit of like 7-Up uh, uh, vetted into um, ting, frankly. Really, like, there's a lot of ting on this. It really smells like a like a ray and ting. That's ex actually that's exactly what this smells like. This smells like good ray and ting. Holy crap! Holy crap! That is what this smells like. And now I, I can't even smell anything else. I'm just smelling ray and ting. That's crazy. 
burned vanilla, burned tires, burned everything, peppery everything. Some vanilla in, kind of hiding in the corners. Oh, this is fun. All right, let's see what happens on the palette. Are you kidding me? Oh. This is the youngest thing here, and it actually has the most presence on the palette of all of these so far. That being said, I haven't tried the other two with water, so bear that in mind. But so far, like on the palette, this is the most the most commanding. Um, still a lot of ray and ting going on, which I'm okay with. Like that's it's the best high highball ever made. Grapefruit peel, olive, rubber, old tire, burning tire, tons and tons of black pepper. Um, what is that? Mint, like uh. Yeah, I'm gonna go with mint tea, but I don't know, like what, but flavored with almost like a cane syrup note. That no, no, what, am, what am I getting? Not cane syrup, brown, just brown sugar. Like make milk, mint tea, sweeten it up with some brown sugar. That's that's kind of the note, note I'm getting. Oh man, that is good. Um, so, were Black Adder optimistic with the pricing? Oh yes, they were. Were they completely out of their minds? No, no, actually, this is this is an extremely good rum. Uh, no, I was writing. 88, but no, this is, I got to go up from there. I got to step it up from that. 89 points. This is absolutely worth 89. Um, it's just, it's, there's tons going on the nose and the palate is, is so darn good and so darn distinctive. Um, terrific rum. Well, I, I'm not going to say it's worth the money because it's, it's too, it costs too much. But uh, yeah, if you get get a good deal on this, grab it, stock up. Especially with your only remaining option being really, really pricey old Fiji from the independent bottlers and plantation. Um, all right, moving on to glass two. not having good luck with my knocking stuff over record recently. All right, back to the Valentin Mallet, 13-year-old. On the nose. Yeah, the dessert cherry has definitely come out, but in like a, a way that I like. Yeah, this is, um, even compared to what it was without water this is just so decadent the the um the industrial side of of south pacific has been turned down and the desserty four square side has been turned up on the nose awesome see what happens on the palate Still a little bit surprising in the way that it just like like throws those peppery industrial notes at you. Um, it arrives so, yeah, like decadent and, des and dessert-like with the, the vanilla and the, ch and the dessert cherry and the, um, the upside down cake. But then like in the mid palette, it's just like the, the pepper and the 
the burning rubber just just comes right out to to say hi. The mouth length and the the finish in general, the mouth feel in general, improve a little bit, a little bit. They're still not in the same neighborhood as the black outer, but still. It's just a really good rum. Um, no complaints from me. I would give this, what would I give this? 80, 87. 87 out of 100. Um, very good, and one to kind of surprise your bourbon-y friends with to some extent. I mean, they will be they will be delighted with the nose, and then with the palate, they'll be like, "What is happening here?" And they might still like it. Um, Eighty-seven points. Moving on to the homesky. This is, again is the oldest of the bunch. I am like dead certain it's from the same batch as this Valentin Um It's the oldest of the bunch, and it was my kind of my uh, least favorite going into this second round here. It's still nice. Like it's. Yeah, Jack Daniels by way of, of well, Foursquare is um <laughs> it's not gonna get me the most excited i will ever be but it's just it, it's a good combination the nose is a little more talkative now actually very similar to the valentine mallet valentine mallet is, is showing a little more freshness um a little more citrus on there actually now that i'm nosing it side by side yeah this is one is much more cherried and slightly you know ashy okay on the palate It's funny. Let me try the Valanche one more time. The way this behaves on the palate it, and on the nose, I mean, now that I think about it, is it's just a slightly simpler version of the Valanche mallet, um, which is weird because this one's five years older. Yeah, it should be throwing like more aggressive oakiness at me, and it just kind of isn't. It's 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 nice. It's you know brown sugar and vanilla and cherry driven with a lot of black pepper on the palate because it's Fiji and you're never gonna get rid of that. But yeah, they're, they're very, very similar with the, the Holmes K, just like a step down. So let's accordingly give this an 86. 86 points flat for the Holmes K Fiji 17-year-old 2004, not 16. Um, and that's your lineup. So the winner today is the Black Adder, <laughs> which I found, which uh, I, I find myself um, eating crow now. I started the episode complaining about the pricing on this, and it's it, it's kind of approaching worth it. And the Valentine Mallet comes in second, Holmes K third. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's my farewell to Fiji. I guess I, I'm I'm happy to try other 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 bottlings as they fall into my hands and stuff. But yeah, things are drying up. And they're drying up real fast. So if you see if you see them out there and they look promising, 
this might be your last chance. And uh, that's all I'm going to say. Good lineup. Good lineup. Thanks for watching and cheers.